بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن والله أما بعد on behalf of the admin of GLM we want to take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you to the masjid and also to uh, take this daros from our sheikh who we have been missing for quite some time. And we say alhamdulillah ladhi bi ni'matihi tatammu salihat that we're getting an opportunity and a chance to meet him once again. There was a brother who came up to me after the salat and he showed me a video of his brother who had translated for the sheikh more than a decade ago here in the UK. And it is our brother and our Sheikh, Sheikh Abu Uthman, Faisal Jasim, who has come to us from Al Kuwait. And he's going to give and deliver, inshallah, azwajal, a daras about the importance and the connection of the Arabic language to the religion of Al Islam. And many of us the vast majority of us actually are not Arabs. We are from the Ajim. Many of us are reverts, and we've banged on many times, and we mentioned many times the importance and the connection of the Arabic language to understand in this religion. So without any further ado, inshallah, Sheikh will begin his uh, lecture Mashkur <laughs> All praises are due to Allah that has given and afforded us this opportunity to come together with these uh, blessed faces, inshallah, so that we can mutually cooperate on the truth and spreading the truth. Tafadha ya shaykh. Wala yakhfa ala jami'ikum ala anna Allah tabarak wa ta'ala qad ikhtassa hadha nabi muhammadan alayhi salatu salam and it's not a secret and it doesn't miss anyone here the fact that Allah has chosen divinely the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he has made him the final Nabi and the final Rasul and and from those special qualities that the Nabi of Islam has, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is that he was given the Arabic language. And he has chosen and given to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from his special qualities the Quran. And the Quran clearly is in the Arabic language. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the seal of all of the prophets. And the book of Allah is the only book that Allah Ta'ala has divinely preserved it until Yawm al Qiyamah. ومن خصائص النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام أن بعثته عامة للناس كلهم. From the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم special qualities in addition to what was mentioned about the Quran is that Allah has sent him to all of the people. عربهم وعجمهم على اختلاف ألوانهم وأجناسهم. He sent Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم to the Arabs and he also sent him to the non-Arabs. Everybody. وجعل الكتاب الذي جعله حجة على جميع العالمين عربهم وعجمهم القرآن الذي هو باللغة العربية. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has made the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam a hujja, a proof 
against all of the people and for all of the people, whether they are Arabs or whether they are non-Arabs. وفي ذلك يقول النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام إن الله خلق الخلق فجعلني في خيرهم. And from the proofs of that is what the Prophet says, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Verily, Allah Azza wa Jalla has created the creation, human beings, and He made me the best of the creation. ثم خير القبائل فجعلني في خير قبيلة. And in that same hadith, He said. Allah has chosen and created them different tribes, and He made me from the best tribe. ثم خير البيوت فجعلني من في خير بيت. And Allah Azza wa Jalla has also created different households and made me from the best household. قال فأنا خيرهم نفسا وخيرهم بيتا. So the Prophet said in this hadith, therefore I am the best of the people in my nafs. And I'm the best of the people from the house that I come from. وهذا الحديث صريح في تفضيل النبي عليه السلام من جهة نفسه وبيته وقبيلته وجنسه. And this hadith is a clear proof that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was the best of the people in his nafs, the best of the people from the houses. He comes from the best house, and he's from the best of the people from his tribes. وجاء عن النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام أنه قال فمن أحب العرب فبحبي أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغضي أبغضهم. And also he mentioned that whoever loves the Arabs, whoever loves the Arabs, then I will love him, and whoever dislikes the Arabs and hates them, then I will also dislike him. ومن هنا وفي حديث كثيرة في الحقيقة لا أريد أن أعرج عليها. There are many hadith in this issue. We don't want to get into all of them. وقد اتفق أهل السنة والجماعة على تفضيل جنس العرب على غيرهم. So in the aqida and the understanding of أهل السنة والجماعة, what there is اتفاق and consensus upon is that the jins of the Arabs are better than other than them. والجنس لا يعني الكل بمعنى أن جنس العرب أفضل من غيرهم لكن لا يعني أن كل عربي أفضل من كل غير عربي. When we say the jins, we're talking about the species, the species of the Arab. Doesn't necessarily mean every single individual, but generally speaking, the species of the Arabs are better than them, other than them. يقول ابن تيمية رحمه الله في كلام جميل. قال فالذي عليه أهل السنة والجماعة اعتقاد أن جنس العرب أفضل من جنس العجم. And from this issue, Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah he said, أهل السنة والجماعة have the اعتقاد and the belief that the species of the Arabs are better than any other species. وقد نقل هذه العقيدة غير واحد من أهل السنة والجماعة في كتبهم في العقائد ومن ذلك حرب الكرماني. And it has been reported and recorded from a number of scholars of Islam that the Arabs, in terms of the species, the jins of the Arab. Is that they're better than non-Arabs, and from those imams who mention that is Al Imam Al Qurmani. وكان سلمان الفارسي رضي الله عنه يقول إن أو معاش العرب إن لا نتقدم عليكم ولا ننكح نساءكم. And from that understanding and what supports it is what Salman al-Farisi used to say رضي الله عنه when you say يا معاش العرب أو you Arabs, we do not. Put ourselves in front of you. We are not before you or in front of you. More superior than you people. So that statement shows the virtues of the jins of the Arab. وقد اتفقت كلمة السلف على ذم ما يعرف بالشعوبية وهم الذين لا يرون العرب أو لا يرون فضل العرب على غيرهم. And from the consensus of the scholars of the past is that they used to refute a group of people who are called the Shu'ubiya. The Shu'ubiya, and they were a group of people who used to not accept and did not believe that the Arabs were better than the non-Arabs. When that the Arabic language, مرتبطة بالإسلام ارتباط اللحم بالدم. And from all of this, is that is clear that the language of the Arabs, as it relates to the religion, is a very strong connection, like the connection of the blood to the meat of the individual. 
وقال جل وعلا في وصف القرآن بلسان عربي مبين. And Allah Taala described the Quran that He sent down. He said that He sent the Quran in the language or the tongue of the Arabs that is mubin, clear. وقال جل وعلا إن جعلناه قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون. And Allah mentioned verily we sent it as a Quran that is in Arabic in the hopes that you will understand. وهذه الفضيلة لهذه اللغة العربية لا تختص بمن ولد عربيا. This special quality of the Arabic language, it doesn't mean that there is a special quality in the one who was born as an Arab with the Arabic language. لأن العرب إذا أطلقت يطلق على من جمعوا ثلاثة أوصاف. Because when you say the Arab, he's an Arab. That's an Arab. There are three different qualities. That should be understood when you say the Arab or an Arab. الأول اللسان اللغة. First one is a person's language, his lisan. الثاني أنه يولد من أسرة عربية. Second one, he was born from a family that are Arabs. الثالث الأرض أنه يعيش في ديار عربية. Number three is he comes and he was born in the land of the Arabs. لكن قوام هذه الأوصاف كلها هو اللسان واللغة. But the main thing about these three characteristics of these Osaf is the one who his lisan, his tongue, is the Arabic tongue. So if an individual, he was an Arab, for an example, but he's not speaking Arabic, he doesn't know Arabic, then even if he was born from a family of Arabs or in the land of the Arabs, then this is not considered, it's not what we're talking about right here. And the person who, even if he wasn't born as an Arab, but he learned Arabic and his tongue became a language of the Arabs, even if he wasn't born in their lands and he wasn't born from the family, this is from what is an Arab. يقول ابن تيمية رحمه الله بعدما ذكر فضائل العرب والأحاديث الواردة فيها ومعتقدة أهل السنة والجماعة. And for this reason, Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned after he talked about the virtues of the Arabs and he talked about the اعتقاد of أهل السنة about the virtues of the Arab, he said. قال ما ذكرناه عن حكم اللسان العربي وأخلاق العرب. كيف؟ ما ذكرناه عن حكم اللسان العربي وأخلاق العرب. He said the one that we have mentioned Ibn Taymiyyah said what we have mentioned already about the حكم of who's an Arab and the أخلاق and the characters of characteristics of the Arabic. قال يثبت لمن كان كذلك وإن كان أصله فارسيا. He said what we have mentioned already this also can be applicable to the person who's not an Arab even if he's from Persia it still is applicable to him if these qualities are with him. وينتفي عما ليس كذلك وإن كان أصله هاشميا. And the one who is not speaking Arabic language and so forth and so on, this is not applicable to him even if he's from Bani Hashim. وذلك لأن العربية لها ارتباط بالدين فالكمال إنما يحصل بهذه اللغة مع ارتباطها بهذا الإسلام. So that's because of the tremendous connection of the Arabic language with the religion and the complete of the religion and the deen and the connection of the Arabic language with all of that. ولذاك لما ذكر شيخ الإسلام تيمي رحمة الله فضل الجنس العرب ذكر أن الفضل ينبني على أمرين. So for this reason, Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, when he talked about the species of the Arabs being better than any other species, the jinns, he mentioned two things. قال قوة العقل والأخلاق. He said number one. That the Arabs have the strength of intelligence and their akhlaq. الثاني قوة اللسان والمنطق والبيان. The second one is the strength of the language and the way they think. وكل من عرف اللغة العربية وقارنها بجميع اللغات عرف أن العربية لا توازيها لغة على وجه الأرض. And anyone who would look at this situation and you were going to compare the people of the Arabic language and those who don't speak Arabic, the two languages, there is no doubt that the Arabic language is greater. 
فالعربية كلغة من أجمع اللغات تتكلم تعطيك المعنى الكبير في أوجز لفظ. So the Arabic language is a tremendous language and the one who's able to speak with it there's a big difference between it and any other language. والشيء الواحد يكون له عدة مترادفات كل صفة تد... كل اسم يدل على معنى غير الآخر. There may be one particular thing that is being spoken about or being described. And in the Arabic language, that particular thing may have multiple words. And each word that's given to describe that thing, it has many, many meanings connected to it. يعني مثال. An example of that. كلمة واحدة في اللغة العربية تشمل الفعل والفاعل مفعول به. Like one word of the Arabic language. And it includes the action the one who's doing the action and the one who the action is falling upon it. Qataltuhu. Like in Arabic language you say Qataltuhu. I killed him. Three kalimat. I killed him. Like in Arabic, kalima wahida. It means I killed him. I killed him. But in the Arabic language it's only one, one word. That's it. Another, another in the Arabic language like to be able to see another in the language of the Arabs. This were another <coughs> to look, to see. He said that there are 28 words, 28 words that can be used to describe or to say nadartuhu, another. Each one of them is different from the other. Twenty-eight different words. تراكيب اللغوية في اللغة العربية تختلف عن تراكيب في اللغات الأخرى. So the way that words are built in the Arabic language, the way that they are, is not like that in any other language. اللغة العربية الجمل نوعان اسمية وفعلية. In the Arabic language, a sentence is of two types. A sentence that is اسمية a, a, a sentence of um, starts with noun. nominal and verbal. لكن اللغة الإنجليزية وغيرها ليس فيها إلا الجملة الإسمية فقط لا يمكن تبدأ الجملة بالفعل. But in English, for an example, it's not like that. It's just a a nominal sentence. They don't have a verbal sentence. It's just nominal. المقارنات كثيرة جدا ليس المجال لبسطها لكن هذا لبيان فقط أن اللغة العربية لغة ثرية جدا. So in speaking about this example of saying in English there's only the nominal and not a verbal, he said there are many examples of this. This is not the time to explain all of those examples as it relates to all the languages. He just wants to give you that point so that you can understand. ولذلك نعرف لماذا خص الله خاتم الأنبياء بأن يكون عربيا. And from this we understand. Why Allah Azawajal chose the last and final prophet to be from those who speak the Arabic language. From this point right now we understand it. And also Allah Ta'ala divinely chose that the last book, his last book would be in the language of the Arabs. And although the last book is in Arabic. That's not the language of everybody, but there's wisdom in the fact that the Arabic language has been chosen to be the last book in Arabic. So from this, Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah said that the fact that the Quran, the religion is in Arabic, it has an impact on the person in terms of his behavior and his understanding, his intellect, and the deen. Ibn Taymiyyah said in some beautiful kalam, He said, you should know that the importance of the language and the significance of the language has an impact upon how people behave. والخلق. And their, you know, their akhlaq, the way they are. والدين. And their religion. تأثيرا قويا بينا. It has a strong impact that is clear. ويؤثر أيضا في مشابهة صدر هذه الأمة من الصحابة والتابعين. And it also has an impact upon the inshirah, how people will relate to it and their spirits be affected by it. 
ومشابهة صدر هذه الأمة من الصحابة والتابعين. And also how it had an impact upon the companions as well as the tabi'een. قال ومشابهة الصحابة والتابعين تزيد العقل والدين والخلق. So when you look at those companions and those tabi'een, you see the impact of the Arabic language on the akhlaq and the intellect as it relates to the deen. قال ولذا قال ثم قال وأيضا فإن نفس اللغة العربية من الدين. So this issue of the Arabic language and its importance is from the religion of Al Islam. ومعرفتها فرض واجب. And knowing the Arabic language is something that is an obligation upon us. قال فإن فهم الكتاب والسنة فرض. He said understanding the kitab and the sunnah is an obligation. ولا يفهم إلا بفهم اللغة العربية. And it is not understood the deen, the kitab, the sunnah except in Arabic language. وما لا يتم الواجب به فإلا به فهو واجب. And there is the principle: the thing that the wajib cannot be obtained except through that thing, then that thing is wajib itself. وذلك لم يعرف في تاريخ الإسلام أن الأمم التي دخلت الإسلام من الأعاجم. And for that reason, it is not known historically in Al Islam. That any group of people who are not Arabs, when they accepted Al Islam, is not known except. لم يتكلم عربية. بكل الأمم دخل الإسلام وتكلم العربية. That when those different nations enter into Al Islam, although they were Arabs, historically it has always happened where they have they learned the Arabic language. فالفرس والترك والروم والبربر كلهم دخل الإسلام وتعلموا اللغة العربية. The Persians. The Turkish people, the Roman people, all of those people, when they come into this religion, they learn the Arabic language. ولم يعرف أن عالما يقوم ويترجم له الآخر. And it's not known that a scholar, you know, he comes and he's the scholar in Islam comes and he relies on someone else. فكانوا يتعلمون اللغة العربية مع بقاء لغتهم الأخرى، لكنهم يتعلمون اللغة العربية. They used to learn the Arabic language. Although they had their own languages, because the Arabic language has a connection to the deen. ومن هنا نرى كثيرا من العلماء والأساطين ليس عربا. And this is why we find a lot of the scholars of the past who are not Arabs, and a lot of the leaders of the past who are not Arabs. أئمة السنة البخاري مسلم أبو داود بن ماجة الترمذي ليس عربا. For an example, Al Imam Al Bukhari, Al Imam Muslim, Al Imam Ibn Majah, Al Imam Al Nisa'i, those people were not Arabs. بل أبو حنيف على المشهور وهو من أمة الأربعة ليس عربيا. Al Imam Abu Hanif is what is well known from those four Imams. He's not an Arab. بل بعض أمة اللغة العربية ليس عربا كسيبوي. Even some of the scholars who are prolific in the Arabic language, they themselves are not Arabs, like Sibawi. لكن هل هؤلاء ليسوا عربا ليس لهم فضيلة العرب بل لهم فضيلة العرب وهم داخلون في فضل العرب. But the fact that they were not Arabs, does that mean that they're not good? He said no. They knew the language of the Arabs, and as a result of that, they have the virtues of the Arabs themselves. فهذه الفضيلة تنال بهذه اللغة. So this position that those imams were able to assume and grab is as a result of them being prolific and foremost in the Arabic language and understanding it. فاللغة العربية أهميتها من عدة جوانب. So the language of the Arabs, its importance, it comes clear to us from many different angles. أولا كما ذكرنا ارتباطها الوثيق بالدين الإسلامي والقرآن الكريم بالخصوص. Number one, as we mentioned. It's the connection of the Arabic language to the Deen of Allah Azza wa Jalla, and the connection of the Arabic language to the Quran. واللغة العربية من أعظم الأمور تعلمها من أعظم الأمور الذي يحمي الإنسان بعد الله من الوقوع في الفتن وفي البدع. And the Quran and understanding the Quran is from the greatest affairs that will prevent and protect the person from falling to fit in those kinds of problems. ولذلك البدع ظهرت في الإسلام من أناس جهل اللغة العربية. And for that reason, innovation it came into the religion in many instances as a result of people who don't know the Arabic language. يقول الشافعي رحمه الله في معرض أسباب بيع أسباب وقوع ناس في البدع. Al Imam Al Shafi he mentioned from the reasons why people fell into innovation. قال ما جهل الناس ولا اختلفوا إلا لتركهم لسان العرب. He said that the people who had اختلاف and they had all these problems 
because they abandoned the Arabic language. وقال حسن البصري عن أهل البدع قال أهلكتهم العجمة. He said that the Imam Al Hasan Al Basri concerning people of innovation. He said these people of innovation are the people who are those who don't know the Arabic language. وهذا كثير عن العلماء بأن أهل البدع إنما وقعوا بسبب ما عندهم من العجمة وعدم إتقان اللغة. And this is well known from the scholars of Al Islam that many of them have mentioned that. Innovation was introduced and presented to the religion as a result of people who didn't understand, comprehend the Arabic language. ومن أهمية اللغة العربية أنها من أقوى الروابط والصلات بين المسلمين. The Sheikh said, from the important affairs to show us the significance of the Arabic language is that it's a connection between the Muslims. It's something that connects us between ourselves. ولذلك من مقومات الوحدة من أهم مقاومة الوحدة في المجتمعات هي اللغة. So from those things that from the most important issues that will unite the nation is the language itself. ومن هنا فإن الدول تفرض على من يعيش بينها ويعطى الجنسية أن يك أن يتعلم لغتهم ليحصل الاندماج. And for that reason, many nations they make it compulsory and incumbent upon the people who are in their nation. That they have to learn the language of that nation so that they could become part and united with the particular nation. وكل أمة تريد نشر ثقافتها تسعى ذلك من خلال نشر لغتها. And in these nations, anyone who wants to talk about where they come from, about who they are, they have to do it in the language of the host nation. فمن أسباب وحدة المسلمين واجتماع مندماجهم هو أن تتحد لغتهم. So from those things which will cause the Muslims to be united is that they speak this Arabic language collectively. ومن أكبر أسباب اختلاف بين المسلمين هو اختلافهم في اللغات. And from the biggest reasons why the Muslims have اختلاف is the fact that they have difference of opinion as it relates to the language. وجهل اللغة العربية له آثار على الفرد وعلى المجتمع. And this issue of Arabic language has a lot of impact upon the individual as well as on society and groups. من آثار ذلك انقطاع الصلة بالكتاب والسنة. For an example, the Disconnect between the kitab and the sunnah when people don't know Arabic language. This is what's happening. لأن الذي لا يعرف لغة عربية لا يمكنه أن يأخذ العلم وأن يقرأ الكتاب والسنة مباشرة. Because the one who does not know Arabic language, he doesn't have the ability to take knowledge directly from the Quran and the Sunnah. وإنما يأخذها بواسطة وهي المترجم. He has to take the understanding of the language by an intermediary, and that's the translation of the Arabic language for him. وهذا يفقده اللذة لذة الدين لذة القرآن لذة السنة. And 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 that's when you lose the sweetness and the taste of the deen and the sweetness of the Quran and the Sunnah. فضل أنه يعزله عن العلم والوقوف على النصوص. <laughs> because with the Arabic language, the individual he makes it, puts himself in the position where he doesn't understand the nasus of the language. If he knew the Arabic, then he can do that. من أثار جهل اللغة العربية أنه يعتمد الإنسان في الترجيح ومعرفة القول الصحيح في الخلاف على الواسطة وهي المترجم. So from the effect and the impact of not knowing the Arabic language, that if there is اختلاف between the people, the one who doesn't know the Arabic language is going to be obliged to depend upon the translation of the one who's translating to him to understand the issue of اختلاف. لأنه يعجز عن الوقوف على النصوص فيبقى عالة على غيره. Because he doesn't have the ability to listen to the text himself, so he's always reliant upon the one who's making the translation for him. وهو على خطر إن وفق لمترجم من أهل السنة تدا وإلا ضل ولم يدري أنه ضل. So what happens for that person who doesn't know the Arabic language is. When an individual is translating to him, if he's an individual of the Sunnah and what's correct, that person will get what's the Sunnah and what's correct. But if the one who's translating for him is not from the Sunnah and what's correct, then that's what he's going to get. ومن آثار ذلك أيضا أنه يعجز عن تحقيق العلم وعن التمرس فيه. And also from the 
effect and the impact of that is the one who doesn't know Arabic language, he will be unable, incapable of just understanding, getting the benefit of what's being said. مهما طلب العلم لا يشلغ العربية فلن يصل إلا إلى شيء يسير. No matter how serious a person is and committed to getting knowledge, he's only going to be able to go so far because he doesn't know Arabic language. ولذلك سيفقد هذه الفضيلة وهي أكبر الفضائل وأعظمها وهو فضيلة العلم. So from the biggest issues as it relates to knowing the Arabic language and not knowing the Arabic language is the issue of knowledge. You know the Arabic language, you put yourself in the position to get the knowledge. You don't know the Arabic language, you put yourself out of the position to get the total knowledge. والعلم هو أفضل العبادات وأجل الطاعات. And knowledge is the best form of worship and it's the best form of uh, what you can busy yourself with. وإنما خص الأنبياء عن غيرهم بهذا العلم الذي هو الوحي. And the prophets, they have become special as a result of the knowledge that they have been given to them that comes from revelation. Allah, for an example, has said to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa tell them, verily I am only a, message, a human being that revelation has come to. So that's what makes the prophet and messages different from other than them. Knowledge, revelation. من آثار فقد عدم جهل باللغة العربية أن الإنسان تنقطع وصيلته بالسلف والأئمة الماضين. From the benefits and the effects of the Arabic language is, if the person doesn't know the Arabic language, then he is cut off from the knowledge and the connection that he have with the pious predecessors before us. ومن هنا فإن الذي ينبغي على جميع المسلمين أن يتعلموا اللغة العربية. So from here, Khwani, we understand it is an obligation, it's important that the Muslim comes to learn the Arabic language. قال العلماء منهم هو فرض عين وهو أن يعرف العبادات والأذكار وكل ما يحتاجه في دينه. So some of the scholars they have said learning Arabic language is فرض عين. Everyone has to do it because through it as a medium. You learn about the ibadat, the worship. You learn about those things that are an obligation upon you. وهناك فرض كفاية وهو ما يتعلق بالتعمق باللغة العربية ومعرفة أنواع اللغة ونحو ذلك. And there is also the other ruling, and that is learning Arabic is فرض كفاية. Some people you have to do it, and that is because the meaning of فرض كفاية. Going deep and heavy into the Arabic language, but that's not an obligation upon everybody. فنرجو أن أتي السنة القادمة أتحدث باللغة العربية دون مترجم. The Sheikh says, so I'm hoping that in the future, inshallah, I'll be able to talk to you directly without anybody translating for you. والله أعلم وصلى الله وسلم على رسول الله. And Allah knows best in صلى الله عليه وسلم وبارك على النبي. You brothers have any questions? My brother, inshallah, ask the Sheikh in Arabic so he can understand. The sheikh, the sheikh doing his talk, he mentioned the superiority of the Arabs over the non-Arabs. And he spoke about the jinns of the Arab, the species of the Arabs are better than those who are not Arabs. So the brother wants to know, how do we understand what you're saying today and the fact that Allah said, verily the best of you in the sight of Allah is the one who has the most taqwa, not the one who's Arab, not Arab. And plus a hadith, the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there's no virtue of the Arab over the non-Arab. So how do we understand and how do we harmonize between what you're saying that the Arabs are the best jinns and these two nasain? 
هذا الحديث وهذه الآية التي ذكرتها هي في حق الأفراد. The Sheikh said this ayat and this hadith is as it relates to the haq of individuals. وأما ما ذكرناه فهو في حق المجموع. As for what I mentioned today is not talking about individual. It's talking about the whole total group. كما أننا نقول أن الرجال أفضل النساء. For an example, for example, men as a group, men. They are more virtuous. They're better in Islam than women. لكن في حق الأحد نقول أيهما الأفضل نقول من كان أتقى لله فهو أفضل رجلا كان أو امرأة. As for it relates to women and men individually, no. There may be some women individually who are better than men. As it relates to the individual, the men and the women, then in that case, the one who has the most taqwa is better individually. مزمل So our brother Dr. Muzammil was asking the Sheikh Someone who wants to embrace the deen of al-Islam and he's not an Arab. What's your opinion? What do you see in terms of when does he start to learn the Arabic language? Because in order to progress and move forward, you know, the religion is with, religion, with, with the Arabic language. So what's your opinion? What does he do? When does he start? How does he do it? al Muslim al-Jadid ينبغي أن يعلم ما يحتاجه أولا في بيان حقيقة الإسلام وما يتعلق بعباداته وما يتعلق بصلاته the Sheikh said, the Muslim who <coughs> embraces Al Islam and he's not an Arab, he has to learn the basics of his religion to the best of his ability in his own language. He has to learn what he can learn in his own language to understand moving forward. فإذا تعلم ما يحتاجه في يومه وليلته وتمكن من ذلك وعرفه معرفة تامة أمكن مع ذلك أن يشجع إلى تعلم اللغة العربية. So if he came to learn the basics of what he needs to know in his everyday life, in his daytime, in his nighttime, once he do, does that, he got the basics of what he understands, then at that point he starts to try to learn as much as he can to the best of his ability in Arabic, from the Arabic. Alaykum as-salam. حبك الله حبيبتنا فيه. الله يجزاك خير حبك. I have to translate that. Our brother was telling the sheikh that he loves him. He loves him for Allah's sake, and he's speaking on behalf of everybody that we also love him for Allah's sake. And I say تأكيد to that. اللهم نعم. The Sheikh, the brother is asking if an individual, you know, just a regular person, he wants to learn the Arabic language. He has a desire to do it, but he doesn't have the time, the situation doesn't allow him to go to a university. He can't really put himself in an ideal scenario to learn the Arabic language. So, realistically speaking, what's the Sheikh's advice for the vast majority of us who this is his situation? اليوم في اليوتيوب وفي غيرها دروس كثيرة جدا في جميع أنواع اللغة العربية. The Sheikh said in YouTube, YouTube, anybody wants to learn Arabic language, there are many lessons that you can get Arabic language from YouTube. وهناك مراكز أيضا تعمل عن طريق التعليم عن بعد أونلاين. And <coughs> and also there are many مراكز and many centers. That you can learn the Arabic language from far away. You don't have to actually enroll in a school, a university, institution, because there are many maracas that you can learn Arabic language from far away. Distant learning.
كيف ايش؟ اخر يعني السؤال يعني كيف يكون عالم لغه عربيه وقع في البدع كالزمخشر يعني The Sheikh, uh, my brother here, he said, Sheikh, you had mentioned that one of the reasons from the importance of the Arabic language and the danger of not knowing Arabic language is the lack of knowledge of the Arabic language is that innovation was spread. So what about those people who are Arabs and they know the Arabic language, experts in the Arabic language? And the Sheikh said, like, as zamakhshari was an ocean in Arabic language. So he's an Arab. But he fell into innovation. So what do you have to say about that? I remember that the ignorance of the language is one of the reasons He said, I explained and I mentioned that from the reasons why we have innovation, from the reasons is ignorance of the religion. Is ig from the reasons why innovation spread is lack of knowledge of the Arab. We didn't say that was the only reason. ثم أن الزمخشري تلقى البدعة عن غيره الكلام عن من ينشئ البدعة أنشأوا الذين أنشأوا البدع هم أنشأوها بسبب جهل في اللغة العربية. And someone like this person was mentioned as Zamakhshari, he learned innovation from people other than himself. He learned it, and as a result of that, he was upon it and it spread it. Well, it has nothing to do with the fact Arab, not Arab, but he learned innovation from others. Any more questions, Ikhwani? أخونا تفضل My man he said يا شيخ the language of the people of the Jannah the inhabitants of the Jannah the language of the Malaika is it the Arabic language is that true do we believe that and Adam did he speak Arabic language Good question, my man. No. Al Jannah got jaffy that like a hadith. Rui and in Nabi Asalam and Lugha to Ahl al Jannah, he al Arabia. It has been reported in a hadith. It is said, Rui, that the language of the people of the Jannah is in the Arabic language. Amma al Malaika, Fala Adria. As for the angels, what's their language? He said, I don't know. وأما آدم فليظهر لأنه لم يكن عربيا. As for Adam, what is apparent and what appears to us is that he wasn't an Arab. The Sheikh said Rubia, Rubia. حديث يعني Rubia. And in the hadith there's some stuff. Somebody was making noise over here when I didn't look over there. Who's that brother? عليكم السلام. Amen. Holy. Alhamdulillah. My brother over there, he said, by beginning, I'm glad he said it, may Allah Ta'ala have mercy upon the shuhada who have died in Turkey. Those people, buildings fell on them and stuff like that. We ask Allah Ta'ala to help the people of Turkey with that, you know, kawarif, those things that happen. Nice move, my man. He said that the sheikh was talking about the importance of the Arabic language. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had told us that he has been sent to perfect the character. So he's been sent to perfect the akhlaq. Is this an indication that paying attention to akhlaq supersedes everything else? Because the Sheikh was saying the importance of learning the Arabic language to learn the deen. So what does he say about that? Learning akhlaq or learning the language, which is the issue? Oh. Hold on, my man. Hold your horses. Pump your brakes. لا تعارض لأن إحنا نقول ال اللغة العربية تقود إلى الأخلاق فتجعل سنة تشبه بالعرب المتقدمين والسلف الماضين ويتخلق بأخلاقهم. أي ليس هناك فرق بين هذا. Sheikh said, in reality, there's no conflict between these two. أخلاق is first Arabic. He said, there's no real conflict because the one who he said, I told you, 
The one who learns the Arabic language, the language itself will have a ta'thir and an impact on your akhlaq. It has an impact upon the way you think. Your aql and your akhlaq. He said he says that. So it's not this is first, that's second. They are intertwined. Second question, my brother. As well as thani. Um, the brother said that Allah Ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran about the A'rab, the A'rab, the Bedu. He said that the A'rab have more kufr and more nifaq, the Bedouins, the A'rab, the Arabs, he's saying the A'rab. So these people, they were Arabs, but they had nifaq and they had kufr and they were shed nas with kufr and nifaq. So what does the Sheikh have to say about that? أقول نحن نقول الرجال في الجملة أفضل من النساء لكن لو جاء إنسان وقال من الرجال من هو فرعون ونمرود وأبو لهب والكفار هل هذا ينقض ما قلناه بأن الرجال أفضل من النساء؟ The Sheikh said we mentioned to you already that generally speaking men have a position that is superior to women in terms of their jins. The whole men, a rijal. But from the men, you have Fir'aun. From the men, you have Abu Lahab. You have uh, evil men, the overall men. But those individuals there, you don't include them as being better than the people of an iman, so forth and so on. The Quran is about the language, but it is still there. Now it is not just Abu Lahab Arabic. So the Quran that we are talking about the virtues of the Arabs is as a species, collectively. But you have individuals who break that mold. Uh, all of the questions have been from Arab brothers who ask in Arabic. Any English speaking brothers, we don't want you to feel left out just because you are a Ajim. <laughs> my man. We can't hear you, my brother. هل يسأل أصحاب القبور بلغة العربية أو بلغتهم؟ هو قد يسألون باللغة العربية لأن حال الآخرة مختلف لكن ليس هناك ما يدل على هذا قد يسأل بلغته التي يعرفها قد يسأل باللغة العربية لأن وضع الآخرة يختلف عن وضع الدنيا. The Sheikh said in the hereafter the rules the أحكام of the آخرة they're different from the أحكام of the dunya. So in the hereafter, they can be asked in the Arabic language because things are going to be different in the hereafter in terms of what people are understanding and so forth and so on. Any more questions from our English-speaking brothers? Any more questions from our English-speaking brothers? My brother over there. هل يوجد دعاء إذا دعا به إن شاء الله يسهل عليه تعليم العربية وفهمها يا حي يا قيوم اسم الله الأعظم من سوي من سأل الله به أجابه Ask Allah by his greatest names الحي القيوم If someone were to ask Allah by his greatest names then Allah عز وجل will answer We're going to stop here إن شاء الله عز وجل We want to thank the Sheikh about Arabic or what? يقول عنده إشكال لم يفهم يعني فضل العرب على غيرهم من الأجناس لا يفهم هذا أشكل عليه الأمر ما مقصود من هذا الكلام الذي يتكلم بالعربية أو الجنس العربي ما هو المقصود نقولنا بأن كل من تكلم اللغة العربية نال فضل العرب 
كل من تكلم اللغة العربية دخل في فضل العرب. The Sheikh said anybody and everybody who speaks the Arabic language, if you speak the Arabic language, then you have entered in and you are part of the Arab nation. So if you speak the language of <coughs> those Arabs, then you by default are from that nation. Okay, إخواني نكتفي بهذا القدر السائلين الله سبحانه وتعالى يوفقنا وإياكم لكل ما يرضى. You guys, we'll see you guys later. أحسن الله إليكم. We want to thank the Sheikh Abu Uthman and don't hold him up because his family is here and he's got to get out of here. أحسن الله إليكم. بارك الله فيكم. السلام عليكم.